Well, hello and thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Fena. I'm a full-time photographer here in the Netherlands. I'm specialized in baby and newborn photography. I'm in my studio right now. I have two sessions today, but I still have some time left uh, before the session starts. So I thought I would make another video explaining some of the basics in the world of photography. So I made a previous video talking about um, shutter speed and this video will be about ISO. In the world of photography, there are three main pillars which determine what your photo is going to look like. It's your shutter speed, your ISO and your aperture. I made a previous video about your shutter speed and I will link it below in the description or it will be somewhere up in the screen. Um, but this video will be about your ISO. So these three factors, they determine what your photo is going to look like, how much light enters into your photo, how much movement enters into your photo, and how shallow your depth of field is. So how much blurriness you create in the background uh, of your photo. So today we'll talk about ISO. Um, ISO is actually an abbreviation. Uh, it's three letters, the I, the S, and the O. And um, the abbreviation really doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's actually uh, coming from the International Organization of Standardization. Uh, an organization which uh, puts labels on things, like <laughs> make them. So it's just an organization that determines uh, values and, and standards, I think, and they make it international so that everybody kind of gets the same idea. I'm not quite sure how to explain the organization, but it doesn't really have much to do with the ISO that we use in photography. When people were shooting on film, your film would have a certain ISO. So you put it in your camera and then you would be stuck to, with that ISO until you would run out of film um, and then you can put a new film in your camera. That could mean that maybe wedding photographers had several cameras hanging on their camera strap Nowadays, you would still find uh, photographers having several cameras. I have at least two with me all the time. Um, so when I shoot a wedding as well, I have two different lenses on my cameras. So I don't have to change my lenses. I can just get the other camera out. But back in the days, people would have different films in different cameras. So then when they would shoot the uh, married couple outside, they would maybe use a film with the ISO 100 or 200 and when they would go inside in the church to shoot the ceremony where it would be a lot darker it would maybe be filmed with an ISO 800. ISO pretty much means your camera's sensitivity towards light. So the higher the ISO, so the higher the number, the less light is needed to correctly expose. So it's kind of like the higher the ISO, the lighter your photo gets. So the lower your ISO, the darker your photo gets. Most of the time, the lowest ISO that you can get on your camera is 100, depending on your camera, of course. It doesn't mean that when you shoot a photo with an ISO of 100, that your photo is going to turn out super dark. Because you can always get more light in your photo by decreasing your shutter speed or by lowering your F number, so shooting with a larger aperture. And if it's really sunny outside, an ISO of 100 is fine. You have bright photos. Uh, when you go inside and it's not so light and you don't lose, use flash, an ISO of 100 will probably result in quite dark photos unless you have a very low shutter speed or a very large aperture. There are no guidelines determining your ISO because it's completely depending on the light that comes into your photo, the shutter speed that you use and the aperture that you use. But if I have to give some kind of examples, then I would say when it's very sunny outside and it's midday, and it's very bright, it's like summertime, um, an ISO of 100 would be recommended because you have so much light coming into your photo. You can probably still shoot with a shutter speed of at least 200 or 250, like one slash 200, like 200th part of a second. Um, so you won't get movement in your photo when you shoot out of your hand uh, and you're not shooting a bird but just a person standing pretty still. So there are no set guidelines on which ISO you should use in which kind of situations because it depends on so many factors. It depends on the light, it depends on the aperture that you use, it depends on the shutter speed. But just if I have to have to give you some guidelines on which ISO would work in which kind of situations, I would say this, if it's really sunny, it's midday, it's summertime, um, 
use an ISO of 100. If it's, for example, a little bit cloudy, it's overcast, I would say use an ISO somewhere between 400 and 800. It could work, really, depending on everything else in your camera. But just to give you an example, um, if it's uh, later in the day, the sun is almost setting, it's a little bit darker outside, maybe go to 800 or up, 1600 maybe. Um, when you're inside as well and you don't use flash, you might need an ISO of 800 or up. Usually the lowest you can get on your camera is about 100. The highest can be like 12,800 really, depending on the camera that you use. Um, now there's one downside. <laughs> um, yes, I love light in my photo. So um, you could just say like uh, crank up that ISO. The down part is that you'll get noise in your photo. So when you zoom in, especially on darker areas of your photo, you can see these little dots. Um, it means that there is grain in your photo and it's not as clear and sharp and crisp and full of detail and full of colors anymore. That's why when there's enough light, I really recommend you to use the lowest ISO that you can, still sticking to the shutter speed and the aperture that you like, because uh, that will give you the image with the highest quality, uh, the most detail. So ISO, shutter speed and aperture really work closely together. If you want to increase your shutter speed by one step, because you think you need a little bit less movement in your photo, you lose one step of light and you can correct this by increasing your ISO with one step as well and you should kind of be the same again with the amount of light in your image some would say graining your photo is okay like it looks cool it's kind of like this vintage looking uh, look and feel in your photo there's a little bit of grain you can see these little dots in the darker area of your photos yes but I would say shoot your image as sharp as possible with the lowest ISO possible um, and create this effect when you edit your photo and your post processing because then it means you still have your image in a good quality as well um, but that's just my personal opinion play taking photos is just it's a creative profession so what i like is maybe not what you like but that's great because then we don't create exactly the same image it also depends a little bit on your camera how much you notice the grain when shooting at a higher iso there's a difference for example between shooting on a crop camera and a full frame camera on a full frame camera you'll really notice the grain less when you shoot at a higher iso i'm not afraid to shoot at iso 3200 when I have to, like sometimes I'm in a church where I cannot use flash or um, I cannot bounce my flash, flash off the ceiling and when I shoot with my full frame I can really crank up my ISO without noticing a lot of grain. For example, when you put your photos on Instagram, they're so small you won't really notice the grain. But when you print it really big uh, and there are many dark areas on your photo, you're gonna notice the grain when you've shot the photo at a really high ISO. So it's especially when you shoot, for example, a large group of people and you wanna have the people standing in the front row and the people standing in the second or third row, like the last row, uh, to be sharp and in focus. You wanna shoot with a smaller aperture, so a larger F number, which means that you lose light in your photos and you can compensate this by cranking, cranking up your ISO. So in those kind of conditions, it's really nice that you can uh, increase your ISO but so you still get enough light in your photos. So if you crank up your ISO because you want to shoot with a faster shutter speed or a smaller aperture then uh, or you just don't have enough light I would recommend you to shoot in RAW because you can uh, apply a lot of noise reduction in RAW and still get pretty sharp looking images um, even though you might have shot them with a right big uh, with a high ISO. I really hope this makes sense. Now I'm going to show you some examples. Okay, so here I have my lovely assistant, this little rocking horse with his broken leg. And I'm going to take photos of him uh, changing my ISO and then I'll change, change, I'll show you what the photo is going to look like. Okay, so here I am with my camera. I'm going to shoot it in raw and fine JPEG. And I have right now, let me see, I'm going to shoot it uh, 3.2, my aperture is going to be 3.2, my shutter speed is going to be 200 and I'm going to play with my ISO to show you what the image is going to look like. So first let's go to the lowest ISO that I have, which is an ISO 100 and I can already see in my display that the photo is going to be underexposed. Um, yeah, it's dark, there's just nothing. 
kind of on the back of my camera. Then I'm gonna go to an ISO of 200. I kind of see the rocking horse, but it's still super dark. Then I'm gonna go to, let's go to 400. Yeah, there's a little bit of horse showing, not that much yet. Then I'm gonna go to, let's say 800. So I'm skipping the 640 and the 500. Let's just go to 800. Yes, a little bit more horse, but still not bright enough for my liking. So I'll go to ISO 1600. There you can see a lot more of the horses showing up. Let's go to 2500. Because I think that might be the image I'm looking for. I like this. It's nice and bright. I focus on the eye. Uh, but you're going to notice some grain showing. Okay, so let's go even higher. Let's say let's go to 4000. Yes, that's going to be super bright. Then let's go to, just to show you, 6400. Very bright image. So I haven't changed anything else. I only played with my ISO. So I thought I would just show you how I adjust my ISO on this camera. This is the D610. I have my 2470 millimeter lens. So I press this button right here underneath and then I move this little thingy to change my ISO. So it's in the screen as well. I don't know if you can see, like you, I twist here, you'll see the ISO going up and down but I have to press this little button at the same time because otherwise moving this will move my shutter speed. So with the same um, button right here, I can do my shutter speed or my ISO by pressing this little button. On cameras, it's different. Check the menu of your camera to see how you can change your ISO. Anyway, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it made some sense. Um, I might not be the best at ex explaining things, um, English is not my first language, so I'm sorry if it was confusing sometimes a little bit, but I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please watch the other video as well on shutter speed and aperture. Aperture will be uploaded after this video is uploaded, um, so it might not be online yet. But if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get a notification if you turn on the notification bell when the other video is going to be uploaded and then at least you'll know something about the three pillars in photography which influence each other and which can help you to create a beautiful image when taking photos in the manual mode where you determine your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO. So you can always leave a comment and then um, I'll see you in the next video or in the comments. Bye bye.